Hey everyone, it's Melissa. Today's video is um, just a vlog that I did Sunday. Uh, so it's a few days late, but it was like two hours long, so I, I had to cut it way, way down. We've had a lot of Sunday dinners recently, and this last one was for my birthday, but I wanted to do it myself. And uh, you know, my family was like, you can't do your own birthday dinner, but I said, you know, why not? I know what I want, and I wanted to sell a, I wanted a pasta bar, a gluten-free pasta bar. Uh, I ended up not doing it exactly the way I wanted to because Doug wanted to help, and he wanted to do the noodles, you know, he felt bad that I was in there cooking. So, it ended up, I had to kind of do it a little bit differently, but I'll explain that. But I do a lemon spaghetti, a meat spaghetti, just a basic meat spaghetti recipe, and then um, I do uh, just a jarred marinara sauce. In the past, we have several people that are dairy-free, but in the past, I would also do a, an Alfredo, and that was always good. I miss doing that. But, um, so I do several different kinds of pastas and sauces. Somebody brought a salad and I did biscuits. I use the biscuit mix. I've used this several times and my family just loves it. It's the Red Lobster gluten-free biscuit mix, you know, for the Red Lobster bi biscuits. Man, that is good. And so I made one batch dairy and one batch non-dairy. I put cheese in one batch and used butter and in the other batch I used a uh, dairy-free alternative. So they were both equally good and my family really likes them a whole lot. They're actually, I think, better than my homemade biscuits I always used to make are as good anyway and they're a lot easier. Made some iced tea. My children don't like their kids to have really have a lot of sugar so I make my sweet tea with honey and I put it in while it's hot so I show how I do that. So it's really just I set the camera off to the side. We went about our business it's not mind-blowing or anything like that, but I'm kind of nosy, so I enjoy seeing people just kind of putter around in their kitchen. I like to see how they cook things and, you know, how things in their kitchen is set up different from me and how they go about things that might be different from me. So, I thought maybe that might be of some interest to some of you. I actually did this because in one of the previous videos in the comments, a sweet lady said, you know, I miss your Sunday. Uh, vlogs that you would do and I thought oh I've got I've been doing them lately I've been doing Sunday dinners a lot lately so I will do a vlog and so I did so thank you so much for asking about that uh, I planned on doing the Sephora VIB sale but uh, I had to order very late because I'm not rouge so I had to wait anyway and then one of my granddaughters hinted to me that I might be getting a Sephora gift card, so I had to wait and order the very last day till I could get my Sephora gift card and apply it. So I've already got one thing that has come in. I can't wait to show everything I bought because I think I got some good stuff. I got some repeats, but I also got some new things too. One of them was a Sephora brand makeup organizer. I've got it right over here, and I can't wait to play with it and kind of show all the things the way I put it together. So I'll do that in another video, but this is a vlog and I hope you enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna make my tea first. So I use a half a gallon of water that I pour on the stove. And then I use decaffeinated tea bags. Um, I use three of the big Louisiane tea bags and I just stick the whole thing in there because I used to actually uh, that's what it looks like I used to actually do the little tabs on the outside but they kept getting they kept catching on fire <laughs> then the decaffeinated constant comment oh it's so good and it smells wonderful so I use three of those and you yeah, gotta smell them because they just smell wonderful but anyway they kept catching on fire so I just stick the whole thing in there and uh, it bring, I bring it to a boil, and after it starts almost boiling, then I set it for 15 minutes to let it sit there. And then I'll come back to it. Okay, I'm going to make my spaghetti sauce. Now, it's a simple sauce, extremely simple, just some hamburger. I double it. Some onions you can see in there that I've already put in there. I tried to really, really cut unnecessary things out 
then I'm going to break up that meat and the onion and cook it together. And then I'm taking my tea bags out. My 15 minutes are up. I'm taking my tea bags out, different angle over there. I just use a thing to do it. And then I add honey. I don't do an exact amount. I just start actually stirring and tasting. And I do it while it's hot because it's got to melt that honey, dissolve it. So I've got as much honey as I think. You know, I'll, I'll take a clean spoon and, you know, taste and then another clean spoon or wash it off. And then I poured into the plastic thing. I tried doing glass for a long time, but it kept breaking the glass because you add ice to it. So you have that contrast of the hot liquid and the ice and it would break the glass. So the rest of the way up, you've got half of it with the strong tea. And then you do the rest of it with the ice and you can see how it would break glass. Um, but you do that while it's hot to melt the, the ice and add the liquid, the water to it, and it cools it down at the same time. So that was a trick I learned a while ago. And then I try to clean as I cook. So I'm washing out my stuff and then draining the meat, uh, the oil off the meat and putting it back on the stove again. Well, I, I, I did a lot of, <laughs> I did a lot of editing to get it quick. Okay. So I add uh, diced tomatoes and some tomato paste. And this is a very, very simple basic. You could add wine, you could add mushrooms, you could add, uh, when my kids were little, I used to add like carrots and celery and stuff, some more vegetables to get vegetables into them. Uh, so you could jazz it up any way you want to. Then I do some Italian seasoning. I think the recipe calls for the seasonings to be all separate, but I just, it's all Italian seasoning. So I just add several Italian seasonings in there. And then um, some garlic powder. Of course, you could do garlic. I just have always done garlic powder because I started making this, you know, a good 40 years ago. <laughs> and then some salt and some pepper. Like I said, it's really, really basic. It's just a meat sauce that you could jazz up anyway. So this is a little room off my kitchen. And so I thought I would set things up there. I'm going to... Well, I ended up not doing it with the warmers. I'm going to put warmers on there, and I was going to put sauce in each warmer and then a big thing of noodles, and everybody get their own noodles and add their own sauce. And I'll show you what that looks like because that's what I usually do when I do pasta bar. So I lay, you know, it's going to be a heated thing, so I lay, you know, something to protect the table on top of that. And then there's my warmers. I use them a lot at when I do pasta bar, and I use it quite a bit at Christmas time to keep, you know, sauces warm or drinks warm or ciders warm, that type of thing. I had to get a cord to add to it. Wiping it down, making sure we've already cleaned them out before we set them. I set them over here, but I wanted to make sure everything was dust free and, you know, nice and clean. Like I said, I ended up not doing this, and here's the reason why. Because the noodles were a little, Doug cooked my noodles, and he was a little worried about them. So I just added noodles to the sauces. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the bay leaves, put two bay leaves in. And uh, Doug was a little worried about this, the noodles being on their own without any sauce on them, so I just ended up keeping things in the dishes that I cooked them in and just going ahead and adding noodles and setting them out that way. So it, it wasn't as pretty as the different things, but you know, that's, that was the best way. Okay. Now I'm making some biscuits, those uh, red lobster biscuits that you can make and buy them gluten-free now. So I'm doing three boxes and I'm doing half of them dairy and the other half dairy free 
Oliver's kind of under the table peeking through a chair. So people are, the kids are playing in the, uh, some of the kids are playing in the, our driveway there, and they, they like those, so I'm, I'm letting them know that I'm cooking them. All right. So I've added, added my water to it. Doug's cleaning out the great big pan. No, that was the strainer, the great big strainer. We've got a great big pan that we cook pasta in. We got it at Christmas time. I think he decided not to use the strainer part of it because it took up too much space in the water. He's just going to add the noodles to it. It's funny to watch dogs, you know, when when you're just going about your business. I never see what Oliver does, and he just always wants to know exactly what's going on. So there I am mixing up my uh, my stuff, my batter for my biscuits and t talking on the phone having to lodge it I'm talking on the phone so I'm having to lodge the wedge it against my stomach to finish doing that I can't remember who called I finally laid it down trying to keep on doing that stirring it up and I guess I wash my hands 50 times while I, anytime I do anything, then I go wash my hands. Anytime I do anything else, then I go wash my hands. I have this phobia about everything being clean while I cook. Okay, so I'm going to make the biscuits now. And I just do them in an ice cream thing and scoop it out and then just sort of pat it down just a little bit. And uh, I put it out on parchment paper. It's real easy. It's a mix. I made things as easy as possible. Since it was my birthday dinner, I just didn't put myself out any. You know, I wanted to do it myself, but I thought, ah, I'm going to take the easy way, do everything, mix and do everything as, as easy as possible. So there's one batch, and then here's the other batch. Uh, got a, I started getting a bit of a headache. Uh, rain was coming the next day, and my sinuses always act up, so I thought, I'll take me some Advil. I've got one of those ice drinks out. I don't drink them real often, but when if I'm doing something like cooking a big meal or something, I'll get one of them out. We tend not to do disposable drinks at all. We use our Berkey for our water, and then we use the same dishes. Okay, so now I'm doing a marinara sauce, and I'm doing the Reos. That's That's my favorite. So I'm going to do two jars of it because we like lots of leftovers. The, the kids like to take it home to serve to their family. Okay, now I'm making the lemon spaghetti. So I'm doing olive oil. Okay. And then lemon juice. And then using a whisk for it. I used a tiny whisk at first, and that wasn't going to be enough, for, especially when I added the Parmesan cheese, so I had to get a bigger one. My daughter made the cake, and a little bit my, they're going to bring the cake over and some other things that they made. Um, and my son-in-law, and so they're, my son-in-law is going to, you know, hide, <laughs> hide his face. He was so silly. Um, but people are going to start arriving. I ended up having to just turn it off because I was trying to hide people and they were trying to hide themselves. I'm getting excited there. So anyway, here's to the lemon spaghetti and the, to the lemon juice and the olive oil. I'm adding Parmesan cheese and I just did pre-packaged that was already grated. You can grate it yourself, but it was so much I had to do you know, two pounds of it. So I just didn't, I didn't want to spend my time grading. I kept this sequence on because it's so funny watching a dog. First he looks at Doug, then he looks at me. He wants to see what's going on. Just us going about our business. It's just interesting to me. So that's what the concoction looks like before the noodles are added. Okay, so Doug, Doug's 
holding on to one of Oliver's toy while he does tug of war with it on the other end. He loves doing that. So Doug's trying to hold on to it with his foot, but I think Oliver eventually got it away from him. Yep. Okay, so I'm melting butter. Okay, so that is, I'm trying to keep it organized. That's my dairy. Okay, that's the dairy one. Now I'm going to do the non-dairy. I'm going to measure it out and melt it and put it behind the box of the non-dairy. <laughs> trying to keep it all straight. Of course, everything I cook is gluten-free, so I don't have to worry about that, but then the non-dairy. Okay, so I'm letting people that are arriving know there's a camera over here. Just hide your face so people won't see you. And Oliver's going to bark. That's my youngest grandson. That's my oldest grandson. They're going in the other room. And that's my two of my granddaughters. That's my son's children. My daughter's children hadn't arrived yet. She's got three girls. He's got two boys, two girls. Okay, there's going through again. Some of them. They were pretty good about keeping their head turned. <laughs> it's number number four. She's funny. Okay, now I'm adding the dairy, and then there's not dairy, but I'm adding the little packets of garlic mixture that comes with it. My grandson wanted a drink, but he said, I, I, I told him he had to hide. <laughs> so he's hiding to get him a drink of water. Okay. All right, there we go. I finally had to turn it off. There was just too many people coming in. It was too hard to hide their faces. Okay, so as you can see, this is what it looks like. As you can see, I took away the the warmer. So that's the lemon spaghetti. And uh, my, my daughter-in-law's parents brought a salad. There's the meat spaghetti. And... Uh, they are good biscuits, I have to say. There's dairy and non-dairy. And then uh, I did a thing of water, but there's the tea I made, and I do a thing of ice, and I've gotten some of the glasses out. And that's what it looks like again, the different pastas and some parm in the back and salad. And then... Later on, after everybody had gone, I turned it off. Um, I went ahead and did my exercises. I like to keep my hips just really open. So I do, you know, put my the soles together and then open up my hips that way. And then I do, you know, go back and forth into the middle, opening up my hips that way. Do the left and to the right and then all straight down in the middle. That makes my... Makes my hips really limber and open, which I think is good. Then I do leg lifts, side leg lifts with uh, two weights on there, two leg weights. I do 50 of those. I've shown my exercises before. This is just a quick thing. And then I do, um, I, I just lay down and, and lift my legs in the front. It's kind of a funny angle. And that kind of helps above my knee to strengthen those muscles above my knee. And the front part of my thighs, I do 50 of those. And then I did them real quick here. I was in a hurry. But I do 50 um, scrunches. Those aren't very good. But anyway, that kind of gives a... I was trying to hurry up, like I said. Kind of gives you an idea. And then I do, I lean up against the couch because my, my legs will keep, I mean, my hands will keep slipping. So the couch stops it and I do, I kind of rock back and forth and do um, for about a, oh, 45 minutes, seconds, I do uh, back bends and him just, you know, getting ready for bed, brushing my teeth and then washing my face. I thought I would show me doing my skincare bedtime routine. Uh Put on my cleanser, which is the, and I rinse my face real well, which is the clarifying cleanser from Shiseido. And then I get into a lather. Now, I work it into my skin, but if you'll notice, my skin is not moving. I just do it very lightly and get the surface off. And I don't use my pointers, got a little itch there. I don't use my pointer fingers, 
when I was about 1920, I went to a Mary Kay party, and they said, don't ever use your pointer finger around on your face, your skin, because it's your strongest one. And I just always got in the habit of not doing that. I don't know if it's true, probably not, but that's just what I got in the habit of doing. So I work that in, and then I rinse it off with the wash cloths that I make, and I go up and pull my neck up as I, as I wipe it off, wipe off the suds. You can see I'm, I'm doing it lightly, but I'm still pulling up my neck. And then for some reason, I look down and pull my face, skin on my face up that way. Um, I don't know why I look down. I always have and just still in the habit of doing it, but I pull up my, my sides and, you know, go up around the, let me see, I pull up the skin on my cheeks and jawline, pull it up, and then up and out on my forehead. So I kind of go up and out all over my face. Then I rinse it off. And then whatever eye makeup is left over, I just, I wipe that off with makeup remover. Then um, I put a little bit of the Retin-A in the palm of my hand. And then the Obagi New Derm Blender. Not the Blender FX, but the regular blender, the original. So just about a pea size in my hand and mix both of them together. And then go, try not to use my pointer again. I go just all over my face lightly if you kind of go lightly you can kind of spread it because you know you use small amounts and it's hard to spread so you can usually spread it better if you kind of just go lightly but I will kind of pull up on my neck especially Oliver snoring right here as I'm narrating so uh, just kind of do it all around with my fingers and then pat it, kind of pat it in, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, we were just puttering around the kitchen, just getting normal Sunday dinner activities. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I really appreciate everyone watching, and uh, you know, I just hope you have a wonderful upcoming weekend, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days. Bye-bye.